Recently, I was thinking about some different kind of projects I could work on. Something involving Raspberry Pis or microcontrollers or just something like that. There's one project that I thought of that was going to be something outside. And I wasn't sure how I would go about getting a power line out to where I wanted to have the Raspberry Pi. And I didn't really want to run a really long extension cord from where it was going to be out in my yard to my house or anything like that. So I started thinking about solar power. And that led me down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out if I can power a Raspberry Pi with a solar panel and how much I could do with that Raspberry Pi without using up too much power. So I'm going to use this solar panel and I'm going to hook it up to this Raspberry Pi Zero and I'm going to see if I can power this Raspberry Pi Zero using solar energy and see if I can get it to actually have enough energy to do some kind of things that I might want to do in a future project. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but we'll see. So my first problem when I started this project is I have no idea how to do anything with solar power. I know the general concept. Sun comes down, hits the solar panel, solar panel sends that energy to other places. But I've never actually done anything with a solar panel before. So I went to the place that I always go whenever I need information for any sort of hardware or anything like that. I went to Adafruit. And fortunately, I found a great tutorial on how to use a solar panel and how to send power to a battery and other devices and things like that. And this is also where I got all the parts that I'm going to use for this project. So the first thing we need to go over is what parts do we need? Obviously, we need the solar panel. We also need a battery pack because if you weren't aware, the sun goes down at night. So if I wanna do anything using power at night, I'm going to need to store that energy from the solar panel over the course of the day so it will be available when the sun is down. Next on the list, we need this charger. This is actually gonna take the energy from the solar panel and convert it into what we need to either charge the battery or go to the Raspberry Pi or whatever else we want to power with the solar panel. There's another part that we're going to need that isn't actually mentioned in this guide. This is only about getting from the solar panel to a battery or some other device. You may notice that in this little charger part right here, it has these JST connections and that is what you output to either the battery or the device you're charging. A Raspberry Pi doesn't have the ability to plug in to a JST connection. It's only over USB. So we need this little part right here, which is going to let us plug in with the JST connection and go out with a USB, which we can then plug our Raspberry Pi into. And you're going to need an adapter from the cable of the solar panel to the charger. This right here is the solar panel that I bought from Adafruit. And if you look at the options below, it has the option to include both of these little adapters. I got both of them, but I believe the only one that I'm going to need for this project is this little angled adapter. And I've already put it on the cable of the solar panel. So the first thing I need to do is set up the charger so that I can plug the solar panel into it. The PCB of the charger comes with a capacitor that we're going to need to solder to the board. And you'll see that on this guide, they have a warning to make sure that you check the polarity of the capacitor and have the right wire plugged into the right place. So if you notice on this capacitor, there's this little stripe right here. Most capacitors will have some kind of different colored stripe and that is going to denote which one of these wires is going to be the negative one. And also you'll notice that each of these wires are different lengths. Typically the longer one is going to be the positive one. And if you look on the PCB, there is a positive and a negative sign on these two little holes where I'm going to have to solder the wires. And that one right there is positive and that one right there is negative. So I'm going to need the longer wire, which is the positive one on this side and the shorter wire, which is the negative one on this side. Now to conserve space, I think I'm actually going to bend these wires at a 90 degree angle 
or thereabouts. So that way I can plug it in this way and let it lean over so that makes the PCB not quite as tall. So if I do any sort of enclosure or anything later, it'll be a bit easier to deal with. The only thing to keep in mind if you do lean it over like this is you don't want the capacitor to touch the microchip right there, that little black square, because that chip could potentially heat up and get pretty hot and you don't want something super hot touching the capacitor and potentially causing it to overheat. Maybe bring it back a little bit short of a fully 90 degrees and maybe go somewhere around there. I'm going to snip these wires and then solder it to the board. I'm sure it's not the best, most textbook soldering job because I am not that great at soldering, but I didn't burn myself, so I call that a win. So now that I have the capacitor connected to the charger, I can plug the solar panel into this input right here, and I also have two JST connections right here. This one goes to a battery, and this one goes to whatever device I want to power with the solar panel. The battery pack that I have actually has a JST connection, so I can just plug it directly into this JST connection on the charger. But for the device, I need to be able to convert this JST to a USB so I can plug a Raspberry Pi into it. For that, I need to use this board right here, which you can see in the picture down in the corner. But you may be noticing that in that picture, it has a USB port, and it has a JST connection. So I need to do a little bit more hardware hacking and solder these connections onto this board. I got my USB connection and my JST connection soldered to the board. So now I can plug my Raspberry Pi into the USB and I can plug the charger, which is gonna connect to my solar panel, into the JST connection. I think I ended up making the USB port kind of crooked on the board, which is not ideal, but still haven't burned myself. So as long as this actually works and there's not a short in it or something, I'm still going to call this a win. So now that I have my USB booster put together, now I think I should be able to connect everything. In there, in here, So I turned on a pretty bright desk lamp just to get some amount of light shining down on the solar panel to make sure everything's working. So on the charger, it has the blinking power button saying it's getting power. And right here, that yellow light is saying charging. So it's charging the battery. And this green LED right here says that the USB port has power. So I should be able to plug something into this USB port and pull power from both the battery and the solar panel. So now I think my next step is to just set up my Raspberry Pi Zero and then I can plug it in and test it out and see if everything's working. So now that I have my Raspberry Pi Zero set up, I'm gonna plug this into my solar panel, which I already have set up to work with the battery pack. And I'm gonna leave it running for 24 hours on my back porch to see if the solar panel can generate enough power to actually keep the Raspberry Pi running overnight. But just having a Raspberry Pi turned on probably isn't gonna take that much power, and it's not that great of an experiment. For any real project that you might wanna use solar power for, you're probably gonna have some sort of computation or like scheduled tasks or something that your Raspberry Pi is going to be doing. So, I also installed a local web server on the Raspberry Pi Zero, and I also installed this little spy camera that I found on Adafruit. Like I said, I'm going to leave this Raspberry Pi Zero running on my back porch for 24 hours plugged into my solar panel 
but I'm also going to have it serve up a local web page that I'll be able to visit from any device on my home network. And every 15 minutes, it's going to snap a picture and it's going to update that local web page with the latest picture that it's taken with that spy cam. I figured that this is probably a decent approximation of the kind of work that I might require for any sort of project I might do that I would want to use a solar panel for, like maybe a home security system using a camera like this, or maybe a DIY smart doorbell or something like that. Also, I was a little concerned about the battery potentially overheating. So I had this little pouch that I'm going to actually put all of the components in, hopefully just to protect it from the direct sunlight because it is pretty hot right now. And I'm going to just have it zipped up and I'm just gonna have a little gap. And that's where the cable to the solar panel and where the camera from the Raspberry Pi Zero are just going to poke out of the end of this little pouch. If I do any sort of permanent or long-term project like this using a solar panel, I'm sure I'll come up with a better system for protecting the battery and the components from the heat. But I figured for 24 hours, this is probably going to be good enough just to make sure nothing explodes from the heat or anything like that. Okay, so I think I'm good to get started on the experiment. Right now it's around midday, so it'll have about half a day to charge up the battery enough to last throughout the night. I figured if I only give it a half day to power up, that'll kind of address the concerns of whether it's overcast one day or maybe a day during the winter when there's not as much sunlight, that kind of thing. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's been 24 hours. This thing sat out on my back porch all night long and it kept this thing trucking along the entire time. It made it through the whole night without running out of power in the battery. Honestly, I kind of expected it to die at some point during the night, but I'm pleasantly surprised with how well this went. I feel like I could probably set this up as some sort of solar powered security system or something maybe try to put like a motion sensor or something on it and that's exactly what i wanted out of this experiment my question was can i run a raspberry pi zero or even a microcontroller or something that might even take less power and run some code or do some sort of work and be able to power it with a solar panel without having to worry about any other power sources and the answer is yes I don't know when or if I will set up a long-term or permanent project using solar power, but I know that I can now, and to be honest, that kind of makes me want to do it. <laughs> 